Russian troops defending territory in the Kursk region, sandwiched between the Seam River and the border with Ukraine, risk being encircled after Ukraine destroyed bridges that are their only route for resupply or retreat, the New York Times reports. The bombing of the bridges is aimed at the area between the Seam River, the border and the territory inside Russia already controlled by Ukraine with the aim of trapping Russian troops stationed there. According to statements by the Ukrainian Air Force and reports by Russian officials and military commentators on social media, there are three bridges across this section of the river, all of which are now destroyed or damaged, the newspaper writes. As the New York Times notes, it is unknown how many Russian soldiers remain in the area between the Seam River and the border with Ukraine. This territory includes the town of Glushkovo, which had a population of about 5,000 before the invasion and is seen as a likely next target for the Ukrainian armed forces after the capture of Sudza. As Nikolai Beleskov, a military analyst with the Comeback Alive Foundation, notes, attacks on bridges make it difficult or even impossible for the enemy to support its forces south of the Seam River and this could force Russian troops to retreat from the area. At the same time, according to him, if the Ukrainian armed forces advance to the river bank, they will gain the advantage of a natural barrier against any Russian counter-attack. According to military historian Vasily Pavlov, the Ukrainian strategy of using rivers as a defense becomes clear as the offensive progresses. Ukrainian forces advanced along two rivers, the Seam and the Psel, in each case using the waterway as a natural barrier to prevent counter-attacks. As the New York Times notes, although Ukraine's ultimate military goals are unknown, if the Ukrainian armed forces advance deep into Russian territory, they could bring key rail junctions within artillery range. Ukrainian and Russian military commentators also point to Ukrainian bombing of the Russian town of Tetkino, located on the southern edge of the area where Russian troops could be trapped. This would put even more pressure on Russian forces in the area. In Russia, it began to be openly discussed that Ramzan Kadyrov's Chechens had betrayed Russia and entered into a separate agreement with Ukraine, according to ZRA media outlet. It is noted that Russian Z military bloggers claim that Kadyrov's men from the Akhmet unit backstabbed the Russians, avoiding a clash with the Ukrainian armed forces during the attack on the Kursk region. A former Wagner mercenary, who goes by the name Alex Parker, has shared on his Telegram page that Kadyrov's forces were well informed about the Ukrainian advance and intentionally allowed them to proceed. The deal was reportedly facilitated through an intermediary, Hussein Jambatov, a former Ukrainian soldier who later returned to Chechnya. Russian military propagandists have expressed outrage, accusing Kadyrov of betraying Russia by orchestrating a secret non-aggression pact with Ukraine. This alleged treachery has fueled claims that Kadyrov's men abandoned their positions and avoided combat rather than defending the Russian frontier. Recent Russian media reports have further criticized Kadyrov's units for reportedly fleeing from the border and failing to engage in the ongoing conflict, abandoning their strategic posts. This situation has sparked heated discussions and raised concerns about the reliability of Kadyrov's forces amid the larger backdrop of the ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine. Kadyrov's men understood the balance of forces and did not want to lose their fighters by simply allowing the Ukrainian armed forces to enter Russian territory. The puzzle is complete, writes a Russian military propagandist, accusing Kadyrov of betraying Russia. Recall. Ukraine's operation in Kursk Oblast has allowed it to seize temporarily the battlefield initiative in part of the front line and contest Russia's theater-wide initiative.